Hey, haven't we already seen each other today? Ah, that's all right. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is still Monday, April 17th. Now, we're looking at hot OTC and penny stocks, except we're doing them one at a time. I'm looking at one stock per video to keep these short. Now, at the end of this video, when you think it's all over, don't go anywhere. I've got a surprise for you at the end. All right, let's jump right on into this. So the stock we're focusing in on is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker EDBL, Edible Gardens. Now the company's got a chart that is just now getting ready to break out. She was at $64 about five months ago, and right now she's at $1.73. The company's in good shape. She's been doing a lot, and right now they are launching this huge facility that they've been working on for a while. So I think now is a darn good time to be looking at Edible. EDBL, she finished the day at $1.73 with about 7.5% gains. She is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. So what exactly is this company all about? Well, Edible Gardens is a leader in locally grown organic leafy greens and herbs backed by zero waste inspired next generation farming. They are offered at over 4,000 stores in the United States. The company currently operates its own state-of-the-art greenhouses and processing facilities in Belvedere, New Jersey and Grand Rapids, Michigan, and has a network of contract growers all strategically located near major markets in the U.S. Its proprietary Green Thumb software optimizes growing in vertical and traditional greenhouses while seeking to reduce pollution generating food miles. Edible Garden is also a developer of ingredients and proteins, providing an accessible line of plant and whey protein powders under the Vitamin Whey and Vitamin Whey brands. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she fell. Oh, goodness gracious, she fell about 66%, going from roughly 1 million shares a day down to 325,000 shares today. Now, you're going to like this. We have got an excellent float, super duper small. Outstanding share count is under 2 million. Now, I'll be honest, I did not look up the float. I truly don't know what it is. And does it matter? We know the outstanding share count is 2 million. So our float isn't going to be more than that. So it's an excellent float. Financials for Edible. Well, over the last three years, she's been growing considerably, almost doubled from 2019 to 2021. I guess they were gone for 2020, going from 5.6 to 10.5 million and then jumping to 11.5 million at the end of 2022. Now, we won't get any more quarterly information, but we can see how 2022 broke down and we can see she ended the year on a strong note, doing $3 million worth of revenue. Looking at those disclosures, We've got quite a few of them here that are current. And I have looked at them and none of these are really going to affect the chart. You've got a couple here about management change, shareholder meeting, things like that. But the news, that's a completely different story. The news will affect these charts. This news goes back to March. Uh, back here they tell us about the revenues for 2022. They increased them by 10% compared to 2021. They got a program going on with Walmart as well as Myers. If you know who Myers is, these are two large grocery store operations that sell produce. And they are working with these companies. And what they're doing is not just supplying them with produce, but supplying them with produce that's grown in a green way. They are cutting down on pollution and waste. Then we've got two pieces of news here about the Edible Garden Heartland. They've been working on this for a while. It's a big greenhouse in Grand Rapids, Michigan. At the end of March, they completed phase two build out for it. And today they are launching it. Now I want to jump into this piece of news because it actually gives you more information about this. So this came out March 29th. Edible Garden, a leader in controlled environmental agriculture, locally grown, organic, sustainable produce and products today announced that the Edible Garden Heartland Greenhouse Facility has fulfilled the requirements and obtained all necessary certifications from both the USDA and Primus GFS. I am pleased to report that the Edible Garden Heartland Greenhouse Facility in Grand Rapids, Michigan has been awarded its USDA Organic Certification, as well as the Indoor Agricultural Certificate, the Harvest Crew Certificate, and the Packing House Certificate. So they've got everything they need to launch. 
When the Edible Garden Heartland facility launches, now, we expect to be able to fulfill the demands of our largest Midwest client, Myers, and other significant big box retailers in the region. Furthermore, we aim to expand our distribution network in the Midwest by engaging new distribution partners that we were previously unable to serve. Additionally, we intend to introduce new, innovative technologies to the facility later in 2023, including our Green Thumb 2.0 system, an enhanced version of a proprietary cloud-based greenhouse management and demand planning system. And that's what they do. They're growing food in a green way. Yeah, it's organic, but they're doing a lot of other things to cut down on waste and pollution. And they predict that they're going to be doing $20 million a year. So, you interested in seeing the chart? I knew you would be. Come on. No, the chart's not real hot, but I think everything else around the stock is. And that's what's going to change this chart. This is ticker EDBL. We're doing our charting on Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. So, that's a six month, four hour view. We got a superb high here, folks, $64.50. And would you believe she jumped from $32 to get there? That's a hard 100% to get. Then she came down and actually bounced again up to $58. Then she fell abruptly, never to look back. She's been under the 200 most of this time. She did roll over it right here, but I think that 200 day SMA was still a little too steep and she slipped and fell. And now, we hit a low of $1.54 yesterday. Now the chart doesn't look super hot, but it's just now starting to change. The volume is starting to come in. She's bouncing off of that low bubble. She's gotten on top of the nine. That's the first step on the stairwell. You've got to get on top of the nine if you want to climb. It's an absolute, and that has just happened. Now I'm not saying everything looks great, but everything looks good in the catalyst department. That can lift this chart up, and she is on the edge right now. Now, looking down at my oscillators, I'm getting a little more hope here. My PPO, my percentage price oscillator, and my ADX, these are actually separating. Now, you can't see it too well there, but there you go. You can see that that is pushing up and my red line is pushing down. Whenever you see these two oscillators going the opposite direction, it is a guaranteed 100% your price is climbing. So right now, it is in climb mode. Our MACD is already at a crossover. It too is pushing up and there's our first green bar and our RSI has jumped from the floor up to 47. Let's come on down to that 20 day, one hour view. Another big fall here. She was up at 437 and at 404, she took a drop down to $2.58. She wasn't done falling. She kept dribbling downhill until she hit that low. She's gotten on top of her nine day SMA and has pushed up on top of the 50. Fell back, but now she's sitting up there. As I said, she's setting herself up nicely. Look at our oscillators. We got a crossover on our PPO and our MACD is crossing the signal line right now and our RSI is still climbing and now it is up to 55 and we are closing in on that 200. Coming down to that five day, five minute chart. So we've got a break through the 200 here, but it was just too steep. Some more breaks, but now she's leveling off, right? She's getting flat. You can step on that without sliding downhill. She's jumped up onto it. She's bounced and she's in the midst of her bounce right now coming up. She is looking good. Our 50 day SMA is crossing our 200 day SMA right now. That's called a golden cross because it's a power sign. When people see this, they get excited and think the stock's gonna start climbing. So I would be keeping my eye on EDBL now. She's got great catalyst. She is launching this big, huge greenhouse that is growing food in a green way and she's dealing with major corporations that are doing business with her. EDBL, eat it up. Are you still here? Sheesh, this feels like Ferris Bueller's day off. Go on, get. You're not going to go until I feed you, are you? Fine, I've got some leftovers for you. Since I'm only doing one stock in a video, I feel like I'm cheating you. So I've got a few stocks here that have good charts. They've got catalysts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the ticker. I'm going to give you the catalyst and give you a peekaboo at the chart. And then I'm going to let you take it from there. So, real briefly, we have ticker SLVDF. This is Silver Dollar Resources. They had news come out April 11th. Silver Dollar accelerates acquisition. 
and delivers notice exercising option to acquire a property from First Majestic Silver. I was watching this one last week and it hasn't stopped growing since, so you may want to watch it too. Another ticker to put on your watch list is ANGN Angian Biomedica. They are in the midst of a merger. They are merging with Elysio Therapeutics, but you got to watch this one. They are talking about doing a reverse split, a 1 in 10 reverse split at the time of the merger. But right now, the chart looks good. The third one I want to share with you is Candel Therapeutics. This is ticker C A D L. Candel Therapeutics today had a news press come out. They have received FDA fast track designation for their CAN 2409 non small cell lung cancer. Fast track designation has the potential to facilitate the development and expedite the US FDA review. They are at the end of phase two right now. And the last one is BYSI Beyond Spring. What I found here was a filing, an SC. 13G. A 13G is a beneficiary ownership. It's when somebody comes in and buys enough shares that they become a partner. They own a percentage of the company. Well, this particular 13G has five investors. Three of them come from the British Virgin Islands and two of them come from China. Now, the British Virgin Islands is considered a neutral zone where China likes to work through to come into the U.S. So I'm thinking all of these companies are Chinese. But what you got here are five purchases that add to about 75% of the company. Right there is 8.3% of the company. Here is another 12% roughly. Here we've got 3%. There's 26%. And there's another 26%. So we're looking at like 70% of the company. That is a change of control. So I would keep my eyes on BYSI just because of that. All right, folks, that's everything I got for you. We're trying to keep these short. Remember, due diligence, it's going to make you a lot of money. Don't shy away from it. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.